Our next guest's top pick in the restaurant and food service industry is McDonald's. He sees value, quote, in both the offense and defensive plays. Andy Barish is Jeffrey's equity analyst joining us now, has a buy rating on McDonald's and a $330 price target. Good to see you this morning. I guess I'll ask you about McDonald's uh, first before we get to the broader market. Why do you like it so much? Yeah, good morning. Happy holidays, everyone. Thanks for having me on. Um, I think it just works in, you know, all different types of environments, as you pointed out in the opening there. Um, defensively, if uh, the economy and, and the consumer does stall, McDonald's tends to outperform a lot of uh, the other restaurant um, companies in terms of same-store sales. And then offensively, they just announced um, at a December analyst day earlier in the month that they are looking at um, a better uh, global opportunity for new unit growth, which, um, you know, should propel uh, the financials over the next several years and uh, make the multiple um, a little bit higher, uh, more in line with some of the other uh, QSR companies that are out there. Yeah. If, it's, if it works in every environment, as you suggest, why has it lagged the market this year? I think it's lagged the market for, um, you know, one big reason, the, the summer sell-off in terms of GLP-1, and uh, the stock uh, got hit from about these levels all the way down to 240. So it's kind of taken a little while to work its way back up. But that, um, you know, that uncertainty over the August-September period, you know, certainly took a little bit of wind out of the sales. I think the company is, you know, regaining momentum and confidence in the investment community. I can't say the GLP-1 discussion or debate won't come up again in 2024, but, um, you know, we'd probably use that as a buying opportunity should the, should the stock weaken. I wanted to further ask you about that. Um, are we at all concerned that these are structural issues now for these companies that we're just going to have to deal with and it's just going to cut into their earnings moving forward and analysts are going to need to remodel? We don't think so in, in an investable time horizon. I mean, the work we've done over the last six months, you know, just shows that the penetration of population and, and again, who knows, but over a multi-year period, it's it's not going to be significant enough to uh, take out a uh, an incremental sales layer that, you know, maybe would have otherwise been um, impacted by the economy or share shifts or something like that. The restaurant industry is just such a big industry that continues to grow and take share from uh, food at home. Uh, as you mentioned on an earlier segment, some of the, the troubles that the packaged food companies are having. Restaurants for a long time have continued to take share uh, from packaged food. And, and we think all those dynamics will you know, allow the category to continue to grow, um, even with maybe some, you know, some impact showing up over the next several years from um, from lower, you know, calorie consumption related to GLP-1. Yeah, I mean, the story, Andy, has been that, that restaurant spending is very healthy and that that's where Americans are, are prioritizing. So why pick a McDonald's versus, I'm looking at some of the other names in your coverage, Acava or Shake Shack, Dave & Buster's, I mean, Chipotle, all also benefit from this kind of experienced restaurant economy when the consumer's not showing signs of recession? Yeah, it's a good question, Sarah. And we do have buy ratings on a lot of those other names as well. We, we actually like the full service casual dining category. Uh, because those models are company-owned models. So when sales increase, you get more flow through to the EBITDA and the earnings. And in that category, we, we like names like Blumen Brands, Dave & Buster's, as you mentioned, Cheesecake Factory. And then we think if, if rates have, in fact, peaked and, you know, we're going to start to see uh, the potential for rate cuts, some of those small cap growth companies will also perform well. And we do like Kava, uh, Dutch Bros., um, and first watch in that kind of early stage unit growth rollout, um, you know, real high, uh, high growth small cap names.